they talk about such thing as evil spirits, like a、uh, Navajo way. When you see the dust storm, the twister, the dust twister, we we run from that. We are taught there's a spirit in there. Stay good day. Welcome, my friends, to the storyteller, who you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. Today, we'll hear from Navajo elder Herman Williams as he shares about what life was like growing up on the reservation and the adventures he had. When he left the only home he ever knew. Well, this is、uh, Herman Williams speaking. I'm a Navajo, and I was、uh, raised most of all a village called Chinle, Arizona. My mother tells me that when I was born, they took me to to Ganado. There is a doctor there by the name of Doctor Sorsberry. I guess Doctor Sorsberry said to my mother that this baby is pretty sick and he can't do anything. Nothing could be done for him. And he encouraged my mom and said that. He would take me home, and、uh, he told her that probably I won't last not very long, probably a week. And then she took me, and she did the best she know how to take care of me. A week later, I was still alive, and then later on, she took me back to the hospital. The doctor was surprised I was still living. I don't remember my dad. However, she took me to Chin Li, and then, really, my grandparents raised me, and、uh, that's where I was. I was brought up, but because of my illness, I had. Real terrible heart trouble, and、uh, that's the reason why I never was able to go to school. So I learned the Navajo way, the language, the Navajo tradition from my grandfather and grandmother. I got some other also、uh, relatives. Were strong medicine men, and they would get with my grandfather, talk about different things, and I happened to be a small boy, and I would listen. They would talk about traditional value, the Navajo tradition, how they came up from the earth, four worlds they came up, and.、Uh, They talk with a lot of lessons to that, and then they talk about such thing as evil spirits, like、uh, the Navajo way. When you see the dust storm, the twister, the dust twister, we we run from that. We are taught there's a spirit in there. You gotta talk to that twister. You could call, say, mother-in-law, or or your your son-in-law. You'd say, and run. And sure enough, that twister will go the other way. And I strongly believe that the powers of darkness invade these things. What what Navajos believe. Then they also aware of the the coyote, ma'i they call. Believe it or not, 
you probably heard about werewolves. Another word for it is skinwalkers. And uh, I became aware of that when I was a kid. I grew up that way. My mother, she went to another mission station called the uh, Black Mesa. There she was as a as a translator or interpreter. I believe they call it the Stokely mission at the time. And she she would only come back maybe in the spring and fall and brought me some winter clothes and shoes and a coat and a cap, some gloves, and always look forward for that, for these new clothes. She would come again in the spring and bring me some clothes again that I would wear during the summer. But there, I learned how to take care of sheep. As I grew older, I learned how to take care of horses. They had a lot of cows. I, I took care of them too. There are others with me. There was my uncles. They did most of the hard work. But I help, can do what I can. Also had a big farm. And so that's the way I was raised. I learned a lot of, lot of ways in Navajo do things. And then when I became a teenager, in 1945, I had some buddies, some friends, that sometime we, we play around and also uh, trying to catch some wild horses. Then they told me that there's a truck came to Chin Li, a big truck. They came to, for some workers somewhere out in the farm. He said they'll take care of us, pay us pretty good. We'll be out there for three months. And then they'll bring us back and take some more. And later on we can go back again with them. So that's it. when I left in 1945. Now I don't remember anything that only that the Chinle area, the mountains around and the valley, these areas. But you know, I after I left, they drove all day and partner all night. Toward the morning, probably around about three o'clock, they came to a, a place where we'd be working. At that time, they had these tents, like army tents. And they, there was an interpreter there inform us that we'll be staying in one of these tents. But you know, up to that time, I I never knew anything about a a, uh, a bed or bunk beds, and they told us we'd be sleeping on this. I didn't know just we might fall off, you know. And so what we did is we pushed those bunks bed way against the corner. We just took the the mattress and laid them all on the floor. That's where we slept. In the morning now, came, there was noise. The interpreter came and said, get up boys, you can go to the dining hall. 
get your breakfast. He's speaking to us all in Navajo now. And he said, then he said, we'll be instructed how to work. So we got out there and lo and behold, there's a whole line of people to the, to the mess hall. But that really sort of made us think because these people were different. In Chin Li, I, I never re remember seeing any different kind of people. This is the first time, like, these were black people and seemed like they were happy, talking, laughing, and, but we sort of stayed behind and we're the last one in and all that day we talk about them how they got that way because you know we never seen anything like that and so uh, that was the uh, conversation all day long and, but one thing again it was really hot out there and I remember in a week's time, we began to find out that our, our skin began to get dark. Suntan, you know. My face, my ears, my hands, they're all getting dark. So that gave us an idea, if we stay around here long enough, we're gonna be like those people. So we decided we better run away and trying to find our way back home. So three of us, we plan about two weeks, I guess. And at night, we got our bundles together and we, when everybody went to sleep, we snuck out. And we walked down this dusty road. We just went on all night, morning came. And then the sun came up. We're out in the desert like. But one thing we forgot to bring was water. And I tell you, we couldn't hardly spit, you know. And then later on here was a, something coming on the road was dust flying. So that was our only hope like. So we sort of stood across the road and that truck stopped. Well, we've run out of time, but we hope you've heard enough to whet your appetite for what happens next. Herman's journey is just beginning, and where God ends up taking him is something you won't want to miss. We read in the Bible, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's Herman's story, and it can be yours too, if you'll humble yourself and put your trust in Jesus Christ. Want to know more? Write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. That's The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Our phone number is 877-766-4648. That's 877-766-4648. Our web address is withoutreservation.com. Thanks for listening. And remember, the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. There's more to Herman's story, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller.